Touching Spirit Bear, Chapter 22. <clears throat> After Edwin left, Cole spent the rest of the afternoon carving. At one point, the downpour forced him to roll the log close to the cabin. He stretched a tarp out from the cabin wall so he could keep working. By nightfall, he had finished the eagle. Already, he had decided to carve a wolf next. The next morning, after visiting the pond, he washed his clothes in the stream. He built a fire in the cabin's barrel stove, <clears throat> then hung the clothes across the room on a makeshift clothesline. If he hung his clothes outside, they would never dry. That afternoon, he tried to make himself invisible. He bathed extra well in the cold stream, then put on clean clothes. He even rubbed ashes and sweet cedar boughs over himself to mask any human smell. Then he hiked out to a point at the mouth of the bay where he could watch the shoreline both outside and inside the bay. He wedged himself down between the two big rocks and sat totally still. For two long hours he waited, but saw nothing. Frustrated, he got up and moved into the trees to try hiding beneath the thick undergrowth. The shore came gradually alive with seals, seagulls, and eagles, but no bears. <clears throat> Finally, chilled to the bone, he returned to camp. Several more times before Edwin's next visit, Cole tried being invisible, but had no luck. One morning, a beaver swam around him as he sat in the pond. At first, all he could see was a V-shaped ripple on the surface as the big animal swam closer and closer. Cole cleared his mind, breathed deeply, and sat completely still. The beaver swam even closer. Suddenly, Cole reached out and tried to grab it. The beaver exploded in the water, slapping its tail with a loud whack before disappearing. That was the only time the beaver ever came near. Cole regretted betraying the beaver's trust. He couldn't help but think how many thousands of times he had done the same thing to people. That night, he danced the beaver dance. He realized that a beaver had persistence, patience, and ingenuity. By using only its front teeth to chew down one tree at a time and dragging each one into the water, it eventually made a home that could dam a whole river. The next day, Cole began carving a beaver's head. He tried to think about the lessons the beaver had to teach, but he grew frustrated by how poorly he carved. His beaver head looked more like a deformed frog. Still, he kept carving. The air warmed with the passing of spring and the coming of summer. Some days, not a cloud showed in the open blue sky, but most days were drizzly and wet. Cole had never seen a place with more rain. Back in Minneapolis, Cole had thought that being alone on an island would give him plenty of time to just sit around, but just the opposite was true. Each day, he kept busy cooking, carving, soaking in the pond, fishing, carrying the ancestor rock, washing clothes, doing schoolwork, and cutting firewood. Cole prided himself on how sharp he kept his knife and hatchet. Many nights he sat in his bed, working them against a flat stone until they could shave paper. Cole also continued to explore, the look for the, to explore and look for the spirit bear, but still the bear did not show itself. Each night, Cole tried without luck to find the feelings to dance the dance of anger. Weeks passed, but the large blank space he had reserved at the bottom of the totem for his anger carving remained empty. During one of Edwin's visits, Cole expressed his frustration. I've tried to be invisible, he said. I hide and try not to sp smell like a human. I've even smeared cedar bows and ashes all over my body, but I still haven't seen the spirit bear again. Maybe you still aren't invisible, Edwin said, climbing into a skiff to leave. Have you danced the dance of anger yet? Cole shook his head. Edwin pulled the starter rope and brought the engine to life. He motioned for Cole to push him out from the shore. Cole felt helpless as he watched the Clinket Elder disappear across the water. This time he had stayed barely long enough to unload supplies. Didn't he care? Was he mad? Cole returned to camp and spent the rest of the day carving. As he carved, two questions haunted him. What was the one thing that would help him heal, and how could he become invisible? Many days, Cole still fought hard to escape his familiar rage, kept reappearing for no reason he could understand. At these times, he concentrated on funny and happy things. No matter how hard he tried, however, he still couldn't bring himself to dance the dance of anger. Long, frustrated hours beside the fire brought angry movements, but the dance refused to come to him. One day, after carrying his ancestor rock up the hill, Cole rolled his anger away, then sat down to think. Why had the spirit bear come to him when he lay wounded? Why had the beaver and fish come so close to him in the pond? 
He hadn't been invisible at those times. And why hadn't the bear showed itself again? Cole puzzled so hard his head hurt, but there seemed no connection. Nothing made sense. Finally, he headed back to camp and worked the rest of the day in a sullen mood. That night, he went to bed as usual, but in the early morning hours, he awoke with a start and jolted upright in bed. He knew how to be invisible.